Welcome to another Fast Tech video. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do general maintenance, disassembly and repairs on your Nintendo Wii U. I'm going to be showing you guys each component that fails and how to replace it when it does. FastTechStore.com carries all Nintendo Wii U parts. Check the links in the description box and the top comment and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. This video was brought to you by the FastTech Pro Auto Kit which is an automatic screwdriver you can use to disassemble not just your Nintendo Wii U but your Xbox, your Playstation, your Nintendo Wii, Switch and more. Let's get started. To start this assembly, we're gonna have to remove some stickers that hide some screws underneath. I recommend using a very small flathead from our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit or our Fast Tech Pro Tool Kit, which is the manual version of our automatic screwdriver. I'm gonna get that flathead in there and just try to gently, as gentle as you can be with it, take these stickers off. one here there's another one here to check the model number of your Wii U you can look on this sticker here which should be on this side of the console and you can check the model number here this one is a model WUP-101 brackets 02 this one is a 32 gigabyte model. The Wii U systems older or newer than this have the same kind of parts and disassembly process. Since Nintendo does not change these devices as much as Sony, for example. There's one here. One here. And to preserve these stickers, you'd want to use some kind of a sticker paper if you have some just to make sure that these pieces remain sticky when we need them for reassembly. Now that we have the stickers removed, we're gonna see some screws that are hiding underneath. Some of these are tri-wing, some of these are your standard Phillips drivers. The ones here are tri-wing, this one here is a tri-wing, which we're going to disable, not with a tri-wing, but with a Y1 bit from our FastTech Pro Toolkit or our FastTech Pro Auto Kit. Of course, we would never use an officially licensed Nintendo driver because that would be wrong and we would never ever do that so we're going to use a Y1 bit or even a Y0 from our FastTech Pro Auto Kit so we're going to use a Y0 bit to get the tri-wing screwdriver out our FastTech Pro Auto Kit making the process a lot faster Links in the description box for this toolkit. It will save you a lot of time, and as we know, time is money. Now we're gonna switch to a Phillips bit to get the Phillips screwdrivers out. Now let's go back on the bottom. Let's get these Phillips screws out. This one here. Note that this one is slightly longer. Now we're going to remove the screw which holds the date and time battery in. 
In some instances, if your Wii U is not turning on at all, removing and replacing this battery does fix the problem. Once we get the screw out, we're gonna be able to remove this battery. This is a standard CR2023 battery, which we do sell on our website as well at fasttechstore.com. To replace it, all you gotta do is lift it out, put a new battery in, order it of course from fasttechstore.com, put the battery back in place, and that should fix your date and time issues. If the system's not holding your date and time anymore, if it forgets every time the power is removed from it, you need to replace this battery. Also, as I mentioned, in some instances, if the Wii U is not turning on at all, the issue could be caused due to this battery. Now we're gonna go to the top of the system. This piece should slide off like this. We're gonna get that out of the way. And there's gonna be some more screws on this side, like a typical Japanese product. We have an overabundance of screws. So we're gonna switch back to our tri-wing bit once again. I mean, our Y1 bit, sorry, I misspoke. It's definitely 100% not an officially licensed tri-wing bit because that would be immoral. Now we're gonna switch back to our Y1 bit, not the tri-wing bit, of course, and get these longer screws out of the way. Now we're gonna split the case apart like this. And this side should come off. Now we should be able to slide this piece off like this. This rubber foot might fly out, and in case yours does, it goes in here, like that. And now this piece came off, which is fine. This is the filter for the cooling system, and the top panel came off, so we're gonna get these pieces out of the way. Now we're gonna switch back to a Phillips bit. At this point, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the disk drive, which is gonna be a very common repair for a lot of people because these disk drives do have a limited life. So you guys would have to replace these eventually. Now, unlike the older Nintendo Wii, which you could have just pulled the disk drive out, disconnect the ribbon cables and install a new disk drive, just like you would for a computer, a PC, if you will, you can't do the same thing for a Nintendo Wii U because the logic board is paired to the motherboard. So we're gonna have to remove the logic board from the disk drive to replace the disk drive properly. Otherwise, the disk drive is not gonna read your games because there's a key on the disk drive logic board that is married to the motherboard. So to remove the disk drive, we have to remove some screws. There's these two screws at the front that hold the faceplate on. There's one here. And then there's one on the other side. Once we've gotten that screw off, we're gonna disconnect this ribbon cable here. We can use the pry tool from our Fast Tech Pro Toolkit and simply lift up the clip like this and then pull this cable out. Now we should be able to get the faceplate off. If this faceplate is broken or water damaged, which it could be, you can at this point replace this faceplate. We do also sell these on our website at fasttechstore.com. Now there's some more screws that we have to remove to free the disk drive. Some more Phillips screws on the sides here. There's one here. one here and there's two on the others and there's two on the other side here and here
Now we, sh we should be able to get the disk drive out, but there are cables underneath. So we want to be very careful with our approach. There's a ribbon cable that runs underneath. You can disconnect it from the disk drive, which is what I would recommend. You can also disconnect it from the board, but it's much, much easier if we remove it from the disk drive. We want to make sure that we don't put too much pressure on the cable. I'm holding the disk drive and now I can go ahead and release this clip by lifting it up with a pry tool and now the cable should just come out like that. You could also, as I mentioned, remove it from the motherboard like this. And that's the cable out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you do have to remove the logic board from this disk drive and install it into a new disk drive for this to work. You can't simply swap out the disk drive without replacing the logic board that's inside with the original logic board and expect it to work. This is a model RD-DKL101-ND and this is the disk drive for a Nintendo Wii U. We do sell these on our website at fasttechstore.com. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise, motherfucker! So check the links in the description box if you're interested. And I'd like to remind everybody that these videos take a lot of time and effort to make. So please drop a like on this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. It's okay, I'll wait. All right, now that you've done that, we can continue with the video. Some screws that we're gonna have to remove. There's two Phillips screws up here. Once we've gotten those out of the way, we should be able to lift up the back of the disk drive up. And now we should be able to lift the top off like this. To get to the logic board that we have to remove and install into our new disk drive, we're gonna have to remove some Phillips screws. These ones here, there's one in here, there's two here. The Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, saving us a lot of time once again. You're gonna need this toolkit if you're disassembling any Japanese product. Because they're, they're not shy of putting screws, as we know from disassembling Nintendos and Sonys. There's one screw here as well. And there's one more screw in here. And now that we've got that screw loose, we can lift up the entire disk drive. You could take the screws out with a magnetized screwdriver or you can leave them in there for now. And now that we have this frame separated, what you wanna do is quickly flip the disk drive over because remember the screws are still in there and you want them to fall out instead of falling inside the disk drive. Not that it matters if you're replacing the disk drive anyways, but you do want those screws out of there the way I got them out of there as demonstrated here. If this video helps you out at all, please be sure to drop a like on this video. That helps me out more than you know. So this is the brain of the disk drive. This is the logic board, also referred to as the daughter board. We need to, remo we need to remove this logic board and install it into our new disk drive. Otherwise, the disk drive replacement is not going to work. You did not need to do this on the older Wii system, but you do need to do this with a Wii U. So at this point, there's some cables that we have to remove. There's a ribbon cable, which has a clip in the middle. You can lift out. This is for the laser. There's one here that we can pull out. This one here, we can also simply pull out like this. There's another ribbon cable on the underside here. We can leave that one for now. We have to remove this screw that holds this little green circuit board. You can also desolder these wires, but it's a lot easier to do it this way. Remove this screw that holds 
this little circuit board in place. And now we need to get this little piece out of the way by pulling it this way. Get the logic board out. And now we're gonna we're gonna flip it over on this side like a book. And now you should be able to pull out this cable that which is the last cable that holds it in. You should treat this board with respect. You see I'm only holding it from the sides. You need to put some respect on the name of this logic board. I just come to let y'all know stop put some respect on my name. You understand me? When y'all saying yeah. my name, put some respect on it. Because if you don't, you can short one of these components and then your Wii U is never gonna read discs again. That, as I mentioned earlier, this daughter board is paired to the motherboard on this Wii U. So these have to be kept together. You have to remove this logic board and now at this point you would get the disk drive that you ordered of course from fasttechstore.com and you would remove the old logic board from that disk drive and install this logic board in there if there is a logic board in there. We do remove the, log the old logic boards on some of these but if you order one and there's a logic board inside or if you make the mistake of getting it from somewhere else and there's a logic board in the disk drive, you have to remove the old logic board, put your original logic board in as I'm going to show you in a minute. Without this step, it's not going to work. I know I keep repeating myself, but I don't wanna, I don't want you guys to make the mistake that a lot of people make when doing these repairs. So now we can install this ribbon cable back in. And remember, we're now installing the old logic board into the new disk drive ordered from fasttechstore.com. And again, this is this is a demonstration. This is actually not the new disk drive, but, but if you were replacing it, you would be installing the new disk drive now. Now we can reinstall this ribbon cable by pushing it in like this, put the logic board back in, get the logic board in there as it was. This side goes in first under this clip. Now we can put this side in which goes under this piece here. So it should look like this on this side and this side. Now we're gonna reinstall this screw for the smaller board. By the way, you can swap this board out if you wanted to. This board is not paired to anything. This board is not paired to the Wii U motherboard, but this is the part that is paired to the Wii U motherboard. If you were switching this piece out, you just desolder these two wires, but it's a lot easier just to remove this board from your old disk drive, unless it's broken, of course. Now let's install this ribbon cable back in. This one here lifts up, this side of the cable goes in, and then push the clip down. This one here is also simply going to push in. I'm gonna lift up slightly, not too much. Well, actually, let's, let's get this cable out of the way real quick, because I wanna lift up this side of the logic board to get this cable in. Make sure it's in all the way. At least this much. Now, make sure that this thing is seated as it should. And then install this cable back in. Now we're gonna install the disk drive back in. And the case goes in like this. Now we can install the screws back in. These four bigger Phillips screws go here. And the FastTech Pro Auto Kit is magnetized. So it is gonna make our job a little bit easier. Once again, link for this great product are in the description box. Use coupon code YouTube for a discount.
and now the smaller ones and now the smaller ones go go here here and here now we can install the other plate back on note that these pieces these blades on the side here with the screw hole go inside the bottom should be on like this up top and now we should be able to get the roof on this thing like on like this and now for the final two screws these two screws over here these go here and here i'm surprised that there's not 500 redundant screws on the disk drive just like with everything else in the system I wonder why they only decided to put two screws here somebody at Nintendo is gonna get fired when this video is uploaded Now we're gonna reinstall the ribbon cable back in In case you did remove it Make sure it's in like this and then push the clip down and now it's gonna be a little bit tricky for a lot of people to get this side in into the disk drive but it's not as difficult as it seems i know they uh chinsed out on the cable even though if they just added a little bit extra cable which would cost next to nothing it would make it easier but why would they do that we're gonna we're gonna get the cable in about this much and then push the clip down and i guess the good thing is that the power and the data is being run through one cable on this blu-ray drive here now we're gonna slowly turn the disk drive kind of like a book and put it in like this make sure the screws make sure the screw holes on the side line up and the four black screws that hold the disk drive in are these black screws here and now we're going to reinstall these one here one here and one here Now you're ready to reassemble your Wii U by doing the steps that, that we did to disassemble the system but in reverse. But I am going to be disassembling the rest of this system down to the motherboard so we're not going to be reassembling this thing. But in case you want to reassemble it at this point and the Blu-ray drive is all you were trying to replace which is the disk drive, now you can start reassembly at this point. But we're not going to stop there. or the fan makes noises or the system shuts off you might need to check the fan the easiest way to do that is by looking at the back of the console and you don't even have to disassemble it and you'll see the fan if during a game the fans not spinning at all that's probably bad news for the fan and you might have to replace it this is a very tiny fan I've seen Samsung 5.1 in the box home theater systems that have a uh, a bigger fan than this but the Wii U and Nintendo systems in general are not known for their uh, sheer graphics performance so it's not a surprise that the fan is as minuscule as it is there's a connector that we have to remove we can get the cable out from under this piece of plastic that it's going to be tucked underneath and you can grab all of the cables at the same time and slowly wiggle and pull you could just also try to grab the connector, but it's going to be very difficult because it's a very closed space. Only a Japanese person's hands 
could go in there and get the connector out by grabbing it. For most people with normal sized hands, like I'm six foot one, so I have a pretty significant hand. It's not gonna go in there. And for you American folks watching it at home, your finger's not gonna be able to go in there. So the easiest way to pull out this connector is by grabbing all of these wires at the same time, wiggling and pulling it that way. There's two screws that hold the fan in place. We're gonna remove these standard Phillips screws. And once you remove these screws, the fan should come out. You're gonna have to slide it to the, to the right like this and out it comes. There's the two screws on the fan. I'm just gonna leave them in there and if you're cleaning out your system, I recommend leaving these in there so that way you know where it's going. This fan is a model, oh boy, it's a long one. Z4G05MS1A5-69J53. That's the model number of the fan. They could have just called it a Z40 or Z42, but that's the complete name of the fan. As shown here, I don't know if the GoPro's autofocus is picking that up because this camera is terrible at doing everything including recording video which is its sole purpose but that is the model number of this fan and if you need this fan check us out at fasttechstore.com or check the top comment or the description box you can use the coupon code youtube for a discount lots of times just cleaning this fan out will make it work i've seen people use wd-40 to make these go in again but if it's that bad i just recommend getting a new one now let's continue with the rest of the disassembly there are some antennas and wires that are in the way but to get to the motherboard there's a bunch of screws that we have to remove okay all of these silver screws that you're seeing on the screen have to come out they're all on the sides here and we have to remove all of these screws Now we can remove these posts that hold the disk drive in. There's one more screw for this one here. There's one more screw hiding in here. and another one hiding in here.
Now we should be able to get the motherboard assembly out. There's this piece that's going to come out. That's fine. And now we got the motherboard assembly out of the case. Now we're going to remove this air duct for the fan. There's two black Phillips screws. One here and then another one here. Now we're going to remove these antennas. These are responsible for your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals. If you're having issues with signals, some of these could be damaged. We're going to push this plastic retainer out of the way. It's like a clip. We just push it down and we lift out the antenna like this. It's going to come out. Same thing with this one here. There's a clip up top here which you can um, undo like I did and get these cables out of the way here. Same thing on this side here there's a clip for this antenna you push this clip down pull it out this way clip here push down to disengage now there's another one here like this. We're going to leave this one for now. Get these cables out of the way. And now we're going to have to remove this tape to get this cable out. Just gently lift up with a wire and the tape should come out without breaking. And same thing on this side. We're just gonna pull the cable sideways like this. Get these two wires out of the way. And this one out like this. Boom. Get these antennas out of the way. This antenna we can just pull out like this. And now we should be able to get this piece off. Now we have direct access to the heat sink and the motherboard. We're going to remove these four Phillips screws that hold the heat sink on top of the APU. And to my surprise, and maybe to the surprise of a lot of other people, this thing uses a thermal pad instead of thermal paste to cool the APU chip as you will see in just a second. Now we're gonna remove these plastic pieces on the side here. Get these out of the way. Get the wires out, out of the clips that hold them in. This one here, this one here. Get these two pieces off. There's two clips on the sides here that we have to depress by pushing on them. And then this clamp is gonna come off. It's these two clips here. A lot of people are gonna be confused at this step. I didn't see any other YouTube video explaining this process in this much detail. So please like this video. Otherwise, I will be execute. Now this piece is gonna come off like this. And that's the back plate. Helps cool the system and dissipate heat. We're gonna make sure that we only hold the motherboard from the sides as shorting out any of these components could mean catastrophic failure. This right here is the Bluetooth module for the Nintendo Wii. So if your controllers are not connecting, which your gamepad connects through Bluetooth connectivity, or if you're having Bluetooth issues in general, wireless issues with your Wii, you could need to replace this chip. Luckily for us, it's modular, and all you gotta do is lift it up, and it should come off like this. There's a connector underneath, and some tape that holds it in. And this is the chip that is responsible for your Bluetooth transmissions on your Wii U.
We do sell this chip on our website at fasttechstore.com for anyone who's interested. I'll include links in the description box and the top hint comment. These two chips here are the Wi-Fi chips. Model DWM W052 and model DWM W051. These two are the Wi-Fi chips. These have two antennas connected to them. And we're simply gonna lift up the chips if we're trying to replace them. If you have Wi-Fi issues, obviously, it's one of these two chips or both. And we also sell these on our website. There's some two-sided tape that holds them in. And uh, these are the two Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth modules. And surprise, surprise, we got them at fasttechstore.com. Surprise, motherfucker. Matter of fact, these are gonna be listed on the website. There are antenna cables that connect to them, and you can remove these antenna cables simply by lifting them up like this. And if you wanna reattach them, all you gotta do is line it up, and then push down the connector like that to get them back on there. Boom. Now, we removed the screws for the heat sink earlier. We should be, oh, and uh, the heat sink did come off, but it did destroy the thermal pad. And this thermal pad right here is a great example of a thermal pad that needs to be replaced. You could actually, you could also put thermal paste here. And if you want thermal paste, we recommend Thermal Grizzly, which we sell on our website as well. Or you can also replace it with a replacement thermal pad, which is what some people are gonna wanna do. You can buy thermal pads from our website and you can cut them to size. They come in uh, a standard sheet and you can cut one according to what you need. But I, w I do believe that put it, installing thermal paste on this would improve your cooling. If you wanted a replacement thermal pad, which this one 100% would need, as you can see, this thing is, is toast. We do sell them at fasttechstore.com. Yeah, this Wii U definitely uh, lived a laborious life. As you can see here, this thermal pad is toast, which means the system saw a lot of use. And when reassembling this Wii U, if we were reassembling it, which we're not, because this system was actually disassembled because one of our customers ordered a replacement motherboard. And as some of you may or may not know, the only way to get a Wii U motherboard is to disassemble a working system like this one here. Since these companies do not want third party companies like Fast Tech to have these motherboards for sale because they don't want you to fix your own system. But I digress. This right here is a heat spreader. There is going to be thermal paste under this heat spreader. If we remove this heat spreader, we remove the thermal paste on the actual die, which maybe I'll do in a separate video, but you need to comment in this video. And if you wanna see me remove the heat spreader on one of these, I will do it, but I need enough people asking for it for me to bother with this video. As you guys may or may not know, these Wii U's did not sell that many consoles because a lot of people just assumed that these were an add-on to the Wii. So these only sold 13 million units, which is chump change for a company like Nintendo. So this system was a massive failure. And maybe that's why I'm not even bothering with a disassembly. But again, and maybe that's why I'm not even bothering with a reassembly. But again, if you wanna also see a reassembly video, which if you are trying to reassemble at this point, which a lot of you are, you can just watch this video in reverse. But if you want me to do a video where I disassemble and reassemble or just do a dedicated reassembly video, I need at least 2000 likes on this video. So run out the likes and comment in the comment section if you wanna see another Wii U video. As I mentioned earlier, we are shipping out the motherboard to a customer and we have to remove the logic board from this disk drive and mail it to the customer with this motherboard because as i mentioned earlier the motherboard and the daughter board on the disk drive or the logic board are married to one another so, so these have to be paired together for the wii u to read discs or for the system to even turn on properly because you could have boot up issues 
if the daughter board on here and the mother board are not paired. So if you did buy this from our website, we would sell it with the matching logic board as we are going to do for this customer here. I will be disassembling this disk drive and we will be shipping out the disk drive logic board with this motherboard. I know I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I figured in case anybody skipped that part, you do need to keep the disk drive logic board, this piece here as seen in this clip with this motherboard for this to work properly. That's another video from Fast Tech. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss another useful Fast Tech video. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech. And as always, don't forget to check us out at FastTechStore.com if you need any parts for this Wii U or any other game console. Thanks for watching another video from Fast Tech. Please don't forget to smash that like button if this video helped you out and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you want to get notifications. Also, check out my vlog channel in which I travel the world and I record my adventures. I promise you won't be disappointed. Link for that is going to be in the description box and the top comment. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out and I'll see you in the next one.